It's Shed Log, 1st of March 2020. Hello, I'm Robert, and welcome to my shed. Over here we have the woodworking area, and if I turn this around, over here we have blue and grey boards for uh, diagrams and stuff, and there will be my computer bench. I come this coffee table with some stuff piled on top of it, and I need a proper desk, really. To make a desk, I first need to make a workbench, which is going over there in the woodworking area, and that's where I'm going to start. The story so far is that I have um, spent, in 2018, uh, I hired a builder to spend six weeks building a shed in my garden, and it went horribly, horribly wrong. Now I finally have something useful, so I'm determined to actually use it. I'm not going to go into too much detail on that kind of post construction positive, which is that I can make a workbench now. The plan is to um, get... Well, I've already got bench tops made, because I've decided to use solid wood, and uh, making a bench top out of solid wood is a nightmare. So I've got those made. And uh, now I have no money left, so I'm going to make the workbench as cheap as possible using rough sawn timber. Which is not the nicest thing to work with, because uh, it tends to warp and twist and cup and generally not stay where you put it as the wood dries out. This has led to some creative thinking in the design, which I'm going to go through now. So, the workbench I already have, it looks like this. few dog holes in it. And my first thought was let's just put some lights on. Uh, but I've been through a few iterations of the design now and I've got something I think will work both in terms of holding on vices and in terms of not d falling apart as soon as the wood dries out. So I'm going to have two horizontal stretchers and the, they're going to be Floating tenons, joints holding, blind floating tenon joints holding the workbench onto the tenons, onto the stretchers. Then half blind Morse and tenon joints holding four legs. Then half rail up the legs. Two peg through mortise and sand joints holding up the stretch. I don't know if you call them stretches, but they're basically holding the legs apart and giving it rigidity front to back. And there's also going to be a couple of other pieces of wood making shelves at the bottom. And also possibly giving it a bit of rigidity side to side. But the idea behind this is that any one piece of wood can shrink along its width as wood does when it dries out and the whole structure will stay re reasonably stable. In fact, even if the bench top shrinks, which it shouldn't, um, it'll just cause the size to arch a bit and be even more strong than it is now. And this is all 100 by 300 mil wood, so pretty chunky wood. It's going to take about three years to dry out properly. And as I say, I'm doing this cheaply, so it's going to be pretty much pine or whatever is cheap. Another piece of wood here. Uh, we'll connect to this one by simple slots, I think. And that should be enough to hold up the vise, which will bolt through it. The base vise. This is the base of the bench. This is the tail of the bench. Uh, the tail will also have another attachment on it, either straight onto the bench top or possibly a piece of wood between the, these two carefully slotted. It's a very wide mortise and a narrow tenon. But we'll then hold up the tail vise, which is going to be a full width vise made from scratch. Well, I bought some old bench screws, the wooden bench screws, 
because I'm not going to tell my own base screws other than that from scratch. Um, things to look for in a workbench, you need height. Height is critical. I want something that's generally, they say you should have a workbench about this high, so a couple of inches above where your hand would naturally fall. That's for general work. Um, you want it lower if you're doing a lot of planing, you want it higher if you're doing a lot of detail work. I'm going to have mine a bit higher, um, partly because I'm getting to the point in my life where I've got to think about my back. I really don't want to hurt my back too much. And partly because I don't really do a lot of planing. Um, I never have done anyway, so hopefully that will, um, that will work. Uh, what's, what else? Uh, yes, you should hold work in at least three different ways. This one has two vices and a bench top to clamp onto. It also has a section of dog holes. Our dog holes can be used along with the vices in order to clamp things to them. Um, but also, dog holes can be used by taking a piece of wood, cutting and matching pattern holes in it, and pegging it through. So you can have the tools melted on these pieces of wood that were just stuck on the top. I've got a engin an engineer's vice, which I came with my old shed. Um, it's in reasonable condition. And also, um, I have a chop saw, um, a mitre saw, that will hold itself there in the same way. And possibly with plants too, just hold it down even further. Um, and those will store on the shelves at the bottom. That's the plan for that. So the tools I'm going to be using are mostly hand tools. I will have I'm going through my list of all my tools and I've come across a mitre saw which is electric and that will I'll be using as a chop saw just to cut down the amount of physical sawing and cutting pieces of wood to length. I've also got a um, I had an electric drill but the battery's died so I'll be using a beautiful beautiful hand drill which is this lovely Stanley uh, it just works it gives you so much more control than a on any electric drill really. I will also have a detail sander if I really need to make anything smoother. Other than that, everything's going to be hand tools because um, I have them and I don't have any money. <laughs> Pretty much. Or rather the money I do have, I'll be spending on materials. Plus it's quite nice to be able to cut a proper angle with a hammer and chisel on a on a mitre joint. Um, I'm going to be using more than 10 joints a lot. This is going to become very tedious and I'll see how well I get on with it. But the plan is to build the workbench first. There's a question as to whether you should build a workbench before or after you do a lot of woodwork. If you do it before, you don't know what you're going to be using the bench for, so you'd have no way of deciding what to use to I mean, do you need a lot of work holding? Do you need a particular height? Uh, will, will this vice get in the way? Or will you be comping everything? Or will you always be using a particular kind of vice? It's really hard to know when you start out. And that's the position I'm in. On the other hand, if you leave it a long time, you'll end up making the perfect bench and never using it because you're finished with work and you've done everything already. So I'm making it first because I ha don't have a useful workspace. Um, I do have, as you might be able to see over there, a couple of saw horses. There's also a little um, workmate, a knockoff workmate um, that I've been given. That might be useful. Yep. So, that's that. Hopefully you can tune in next week and see how I'm getting on or at some point in the future. I plan to put these out weekly with detailed updates and go into detail on one thing each time, more or less. So, if you want to, turn next week. If you don't, then mine. I'll probably review it at some point. Ta-ta!
So I'm going to be using, m ooh, I'm really blurry. Hello, camera. Autofocus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So the tools I'm going to be using are firstly a hand 